Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirbygato. Welcome to today. As we enter into God's presence, amen, it is the 23rd of July. We are walking through the Dream Loud and Dream Large series. Woo! Hallelujah. As we enter into the presence of God, and for those of you who are joining on, I am going to be taking communion elements. So I've got my communion elements here. And so if you want to grab your communion elements, go ahead and do that. And you can always watch later and do this replay again in Jesus' name. And be filled with the power of the presence of God Almighty. Amen. As you come on here, you be hopeful, saints of God. You be expecting that Holy Spirit is going to bring the presence, hallelujah, of who the Father is to you and through you in Jesus' name. So God can bring His love. Woo! Hey, Sue Gailey, I love you. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Jody. Love you both. Thank you for joining in. Oh, my goodness. I am so super excited about what Holy Spirit has today. He is going to bring freedom, amen. How many of you want freedom? I want freedom. We can never stop getting enough freedom, amen. Hey, Carlos, God bless you. Hey, June Horton, so good to see you on here. Hey, Jason Moore, God bless you, brother. We are going to have an awesome time. Hey, Chris Perry, thank you for joining in. Woo! I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. And before I forget about it, this weekend in Birmingham, Alabama on Saturday at 5 p.m., we are going to have the meeting that Holy Spirit has planned, and it is going to have a power-packed anointing of God's grace. Hallelujah. And God is going to bring prophecy. He's going to bring deliverance. He's going to bring healing. So if you're in the Birmingham metro area, show up. Amen. Hey, Mary Ann, I love you. Thank you for joining in in South Africa. I was watching Cape Town, a food program in Cape Town yesterday, Mary Ann, and it made me want to go to Cape Town. Hey, Kimberly, I love you. Oh, I am a hummingbird. Woo! I love being God's hummingbird. Hey, Sheila, I love you. Praying for you, woman of God. Hey, Melinda, amen. I'm excited. Thank you for bringing it up, Melinda. There is going to be a women's conference in August the 11th in Bruton, Alabama. I will be ministering at. And then Sunday on the 12th of August, I will be ministering in the Sunday morning church service in Bruton. And I am super excited about that as well. So as you come on here... Get your elements, if you're able to get the elements, because we're going to do communion. If you're not able to do elements right now, I've got my elements right here. If you're not able to do them at the end of the broadcast, then you know what? Do them when you get home, or do them later, or watch this broadcast again, and do it as you watch the broadcast the second time, amen. Hey, Barbara, I love you. I was thinking about you. So good to see you. Hey, Stacy, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Lindsay, so good to see y'all. Let us get started off, amen, as we lead into prayer and Holy Spirit brings us into the Word of God today, giving us expectation and hope in Jesus' name. Hey, Suzanne, God, we thank you for the power of your grace. We thank you for the power of your anointing, that God, we cannot make it without your anointing. And God, we ask you for the anointing of Holy Spirit and fire, that baptism that Jesus Christ came to bring Father, we ask you for that as we listen to your word, hallelujah, and understand the power and the nature, the living flame, hallelujah, of who you are as a jealous God in your word, that as you deliver your word to us today, God, that we will be so filled and overflowing with strength and with fire of your word that is in us, that we are trembling in our bones, hallelujah with a message to proclaim the goodness of who you are as you send us forth, God, as your dreamers. Hallelujah. That we, God, dream your dreams as Holy Spirit is poured out on us and that, God, your dreams, hallelujah, are loud in the name of Jesus and they are large in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in. I love you, Jean. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for show, showing up. And I love you, Marianne. I cannot wait to visit Africa. I really believe I'm going to visit Africa. I would love to visit Uganda, but I will go for Cape Town or any other area any day in Jesus' name. And so let us enter in today's message. Now, we are continuing 
the Dream Loud and Dream Large series. And I am so over the top excited about what Holy Spirit has today. We are going into part three of this series. If you have not seen the other two parts, and on top of that, watch Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 is really a jumping off like a diving board into the series of Dream Loud, Dream Large. So before you actually start beginning part one and part two, watch Hebrews 4. If you're not, hey Dina, so good to see you. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I highly encourage you to get subscribed so you are able to go immediately as soon as I pull these videos up from Facebook, upload them, then download them on YouTube and get them out there to you quickly as possible. After each and every broadcast, I try to do my best at getting it out expediently. So those that are subscribed to the YouTube channel, they're actually not even on Facebook, that they're able to get the meat of the word. So subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can see my latest broadcast. You'll see Hebrews 4, then part one of Dream Loud, Dream Large, then part two, and today is part three. Oh my goodness, are you ready for part three? And Holy Spirit is going to bring such a cleansing of your soul. It is like Jesus Christ is going to wash your feet, hallelujah, as Jesus at the Last Supper. Oh my goodness, is that not awesome how Holy Spirit is already bringing this together? When Jesus was at the Last Supper, what did he do with the disciples? He washed their feet. He said, I don't have to wash all of you because you're cleansed, but I need to wash your feet. And that feet, that washing of the feet represents the pruning of John 15, 2 that we go through, that we have to be pruned in order to what? Bear more excellent fruit. And that is what we're going for today. Oh, look, there's somebody else from Africa. There's uh, Judith from Kenya. God bless you. Hey, Roseanne, so good to see you. Thank you for joining in. And so we're looking, and there's Margaret. God bless you. We are looking at that more excellent fruit. Amen. And so the word that God has for us today in part three of Dream Loud and Dream Large is going to be such a washing of the word that you are going to feel, hallelujah, that God has pruned off of you the things that need to be put off of you. And it's not that painful pruning, but it is that rejoicing pruning, hallelujah, that you have been set free from things that have weighed you down and kept you down. God has brought you to a higher level of understanding, a higher level of faith. Your faith is going to abound so I want to say astronomically today, that you're going to feel like an astronomer looking out to the stars in the heavens, and you're going to really know the truth of Psalm 19, where you know that the stars that are in the heavens, although they don't have a voice and they don't speak through what is heard, the light within those stars, hallelujah, is proclaiming the message that the bridegroom is like a sun coming out of its tent, out of the chamber, and it's coming to the earth, and its focus is laser sharp, and it is going to run its circuit, hallelujah, and it is going to redeem, it is going to cleanse, it is going to prune, and it is going to make clean. Woo! Hallelujah. I am so fired up. God bless you, Robert Murphy. Hey, Renee Rose. So good to see you. So as we go forth today, let us look at Genesis 37. Now remember, I have an entire teaching to Genesis 38, and that is the Tamar teaching. It is actually, when you go on my YouTube channel, it is actually one of the teachings that I do, and it should be intermingled. I've got it explicitly just on Genesis 37, 38, but I also got it intermingledly mixed in with a great message about Job and it is the first message that you see on my YouTube channel about wake up, don't go to the board meeting. And so I'm going to get that Tamar message that is exclusively about Genesis 38. I'm going to get that out as soon as I'm finished with Genesis 37. We are in part three of Genesis 37. So let us move forward, amen. For those of you who did not watch the last series of part two, we are actually looking at stress as well, and we're going to be learning about stress as well when we go through this series. Those of you who do not have uh, my book yet, God's Fire School of the Prophets, Session 4, The Spirit of Knowledge, half of that book is on the anatomy of the brain. Remember, God had me write over 76 workbooks, and He's had me taking those workbooks and transferring them onto Amazon. I've already taught out of those workbooks many times over as I did God's Fall School, the Prophet series, God's Fall Healing of the Soul series, the Watchmen series, and I'm bringing my first Watchmen book this year 
from that series that I already have over eight books in that series, workbooks, and I'm bringing that onto Amazon as well. And so God is having me take all these books that I began writing seven years ago, and He's having me bring them onto Amazon, and all the revelation that I have today compared to seven years ago, there's no measurement that can measure it. It's absolutely priceless. So God has me delivering an entirely new book as He has me bring out the core of that workbook and bring you a book that is straight from the throne of God that is to equip you. One of the natures of the character of Christ Jesus in me that is divinely expressed, which is Romans 1.20, that God, the invisible God, loves to display Himself in creation through the visible. And so one of the giftings that God has given me is bringing in difficult subject matter such as astronomy, such as mathematics, such as sciences, and also the ancient Hebrew, which is actually very easy. But when we also look at sciences such as, uh, we, we will look at some botany, we will look at some physics, we will also look at some uh, physiology. As you look at that in the different book series that God has me do, you're going to have greater understanding of the Word of God through what God has created. Amen. And so in session four, The Spirit of Knowledge, that book that is already on Amazon, half of that book is actually on the brain. And God, in that revision where he had me put out that book, it took me four months to get that book finished because he wanted you all to have such information about the stress response, about brain dysregulation. And also, God has also gotten me on a new pathway also to another supplement that I'm going to get more into. But as those of y'all who have known my journey on the ketogenic diet, because being a minister of God... God told me about the ketogenic diet. I never heard about it from man. No one ever told me about the diet. God told me the name of the diet two years ago. Get on it. Because in order for me to write like I write and minister like I minister, for those that come to the meetings that I do or go to the church services where I preach, God will have me not leave until I minister to every single person. And if there's a ton of people at that church service, each of the prophecies are going to be different lengths, usually anywhere from five to seven minutes long. So I will minister hours and hours and hours and hours. And the longest I've ever ministered is over 10 hours nonstop of prophesying and ministering and doing healing, deliverances, and prophecies by the spirit of the prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 19.10. And so I have to have this pure energy where I don't have toxins in my person. And so God has also brought another supplement to me <clears throat> that I'm going to give you <clears throat> more information about. I'm getting so excited with my icebreaker, <clears throat> I'm swallowing it so fast. And so God has given me so much wisdom. And so one of the other supplements that he's had me add is TMG, which is also betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E, and hydrus. Betaine and hydrus, which is also known as TMG, <clears throat> and that is to help, <clears throat> help your cells methylate. That is to help your cells methylate. And what happens when your cells... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to get me some water. Woo! Hold on one second. I'm getting so excited that I'm swallowing my icebreaker and I have to get my breath. I'm so excited. Can you tell? <clears throat> so as God's had me add this supplement, it has caused the ability for my body to process all the good nutrition that he's bringing into my body. So whatever I eat, hallelujah. It is going to do its work as it's in my body, and I'll be bringing you that information later. But today, as we look at the stress modulation, for those that are doing the stress modulation worksheet, go to my WordPress, and you will see on my WordPress, my Word blog, where there is a stress modulation, and you will see the activities that we're doing. Because we're going to be looking at the brain, too. And those who have seen, look at two stressors, identify only two, not all the stressors in your life, because we know that there's a lot. Because in this present age, the enemy has us stressed out, where he keeps putting fires around every end and trying to cause us to live in what's called a chronic stress state, which I actually get into that book on the spirit of knowledge. And that chronic stress state, when it's compounded, actually brings in brain dysregulations as well as other dysregulations within your body. And so God is bringing his church into a holy temple and a healthy temple. Amen. And so as you are healthy, you are able to focus and do what God has called you to do. But in the same time, we're going to understand the mindsets, where those mindsets that are within us 
are given over to the attacks of the enemy, the lies of the enemy. And God is going to bring an anointing to destroy the yoke, hallelujah, and give us revelation as he breaks the fetters off of our feet, as he breaks the yoke off of our neck with the anointing that destroys it in order for us to run into the call that he's given us, which is to dream loud and dream large, hallelujah. And we're going to see this loudly and largely today in Genesis 37 as we pick back up with verse 15. And we're going to get some understanding. And that's why God wants you to bring communion today. And we're going to look at your stress response. We're going to look at the two things that you're looking at that are big stressors in your life right now presently. And you've already identified those two stressors. What are they are? And the first worksheet, you put down the thoughts that immediately came to you without even thinking. That is going to show you your mindset. And you're going to bring that to the table today. And you're going to see how the influence of the attacks of the enemy against your soul are influencing that first worksheet. Now, the second worksheet I had you do was to have those exact two stress response events. And instead of looking at the first thought that pops into your head, Instead, look at the opportunity that's been presented you. Because in every crisis, all that a crisis is, is an opportunity ready to be made. It is an opportunity waiting for your decision that you're going to decide that your present circumstances have an opportunity. Let me give you an example before we move forward into the scriptures in Genesis 37. For those of you who know where we had an attack of red beetles inside of some of our preserved, what I had saved as type of starch uh, containment, such as corn, fl corn flour or cornmeal, cornmeal, flour, and other things that are very, very starchy. I had not opened them, had them for a couple years, and I did not know that red beetles were inside one of those packages. And red beetles... Their larva actually looks like grain, which is really scary. And that's one of the things they do is they lay their larva, they lay their eggs in grain. And if you really did not know that what you were looking at was larva, you would actually think it was grain and they lay it within the grain. Well, thank God we did not eat that. And so I left the package in there and red beetles started to multiply in that package and they ate themselves out of that package. That's an entirely different message. But it created havoc in our food pantry, the food pantry that I never really open, it's just the food pantry that has reserves for whatever we might need it for on a rainy day or for giving to other people. And so I opened the food pantry, had not opened that food pantry in probably over a month. And here it looks like somebody had dumped all this stuff, had dumped all this grain and just threw it all over the food pantry. And then I discovered all these crazy beetles, all these bugs. And it was the red beetle bug, which I already did a teaching on. I'm not going to do it today. But this is my point. It was a mess. It took us days getting rid of everything that needed to get rid of with the bugs, with the products that had contaminated products that it might not have contaminated but could have contaminated. And we just cleaned house. And so a negative circumstance where it seemed like all these insane bugs were in our food pantry, instead of looking at negatively, I looked at it as positively and I was like, Woo! Hallelujah! God is cleaning house! Woo! In Jesus' name. And I looked at this circumstance not as a stressor, but as an opportunity. And today's teaching is going to provide you the tools. And that's why God is so excited for you. That's why I'm so excited with the Holy Spirit. is because you're going to have such large tools by the grace of God given to you today. To take those negative circumstances and it's like God is going to give you this huge wrench and you're just going to turn it and God is going to turn it around, hallelujah, that semech, that Hebrew word semech, and he's going to bring you into opportunities and that is where your dream is going to come from. Your dream always comes from a mess. God takes your mess and he makes it a message. You can only live and be what you know, hallelujah. And so what the enemy means for evil, Romans 8, 28, God works it, he turns it, hallelujah, to your good, to where that mess becomes a message, or can we say, the anointing, the dream comes forth, amen. So let us start today, and let us do, amen, Roseanne, you clean away, sister. 
So let's look at verse 15. Verse 15, and let's start verse 15 and let's go forth and we're going to end at a particular place in which uh, Joseph goes. Amen. You're going to be so awesomely filled and blessed by Holy Spirit. So verse 15, and a certain man found him. Now remember, let's start with verse 14 and let's actually start with verse 14 and dive into verse 15 to get the context of what is going on today. So in verse 14, Jacob said to Joseph, Jacob said to him, Go, I pray you, see whether everything is all right with your brothers and with the flock, that then they come back and bring me word, and then afterwards come back and bring me word. So he sent Joseph out from the Hebron Valley, and he sent him to Shechem. Now remember we saw that Hebron meant association in the last part that we did for Dream Loud, Dream Large. And we saw that Shechem meant consent. But now let's go further as we see what happens as Jacob is leaving his old associations. He is getting into association with God, which means he consents to God. And if he consents to God, he consents to God's ways. Now remember, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he knows what it is going to require and take for you to become who he wants you to be. And Joseph didn't get to who he was by the easy way. In fact, it looked abnormal. It looked messed up. A dysfunctional family with dysfunctional characteristics, throwing their brother in a pit, jealous, acting like they wanted to kill him, almost killed him, put him in a pit. Can we say that this is the abnormal that is presented here? And if you feel like you've been in abnormal circumstances, will you get ready to praise God? Because you're going to realize that God has been providing you tools, hallelujah, for the dream in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us go further as we look at verse 15. And a certain man found him. Hey, Sherry said him, I love you. A certain man found him, and behold, he had lost his way. Now look at this, saints of God. Because today, God is going to be talking about our ways. And the root issue is about the ways of God and our ways. And it's not about us leaning on our own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But we are leaning on God. And as we lean on Him, He what directs our path. And remember, His ways are higher than our ways. And if we can think it, it's not going to happen that way. You are guaranteed. If you can think how God's going to bring provision, how He's going to do the dream, it will not happen that way because His ways are higher than our ways. And to many people, it might start out looking dysfunctional, but you have to comprehend that God is a processing God. He's not only dealing with your soul, but He's dealing with the souls of all of those who are involved and he's working on them as much as he's working on you. Amen. So let us move forward. So Joseph had lost his way. That's what we're going to focus on today. He lost his way and he was wandering in the open country. The man asked him, what are you trying to find? And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Tell me, I pray you, where they're pasturing their flocks. But the man said, they were here, but they have gone. I've heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. Now, this is what we're going to focus on. Just these few verses today. Because these few verses are so packed with revelation and truth for our destiny. Amen. And so, God is bringing us into the understanding that his ways are what? Higher than our ways. And that in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the circumstances, that when we're given the dream... There can be times where we're not understanding the ways of God. And if we're not understanding the ways of God, then we are going to be led by things of this present age and by our own strength. And we're going to, not realizing it, by self-righteousness and pride within our soul, where it will try to get us to step out and do things the way that we believe they should be done. This is a great indicator when you're starting business, when you're going into school, when you're a stay-at-home mom, whatever it is that you're going to do. What God has called you to is not always going to look like you think it will look. How many of you have ever said, I wish things could be totally perfect? I've been guilty of saying that. I wish things could be normal. That's my normal saying. I wish things could be normal. That's normally what I would say. How many of you have ever said that? If you've ever said that, you fit into this club today. 
the Dream Loud, Dream Large Club, because that abnormal is actually the way and the pathway to God's dream for your life. Amen. And so let's look particularly at verse 15, and let's get some understanding from verse 15. Verse 15 says, And a certain man found him, and behold, he had lost his way and was wandering in the open country. So this is what we're going to look at with emphasis today before we actually get to the other Hebrew words. And so we're looking at the fact that Joseph had what? Lost his way. His father sent him. So that is a recommendation to our soul how the blessing and the dream looks like as it represents being sent by God. Amen. Apostle means sent one. So being sent forth from God. God bless you, Marilyn. And so as God sends us forward, this right here with Joseph being sent forth from Jacob and Jacob sending him forward, this is a great demonstration of how it looks like when we're entering the dream. Amen. Well, you're going to be blessed today, Jody, as you listen to today's message. It is going to absolutely bless you with what Holy Spirit has. So we are looking at verse 15, where he lost his way. He was wandering. And so this particular word for wandering is what we're going to look at. And it's the Hebrew word to awe. To awe. Hey, Gwen, God bless you. Hey, Teresa, God bless you. So this Hebrew word for wandering, where Joseph in Genesis 37, verse 15, he's lost his way and he's wandering. So this Hebrew word for wandering is to awe. This word to awe means to wander about. It means to dissemble. It also means to seduce and to stagger. And it also means to be out of the way. And so you have to understand that one of the biggest distractions in your life that the enemy is going to do, when you have a dream given by God, a destiny, a promise, where you're going to enter it, and if you're going to enter it, Paul said, at the effectual door, what? Many adversaries. And when you're going into the dream, God is going to prepare you with His grace like Jesus going into the wilderness. Because remember, in Matthew 3, Jesus took a baptism that nobody else can take except for Jesus Christ alone. And that baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. And Holy Spirit came down on him like a dove. And people heard the voice of God saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And immediately, Holy Spirit in Matthew 4 leads Jesus where? Into the wilderness. And so when we are looking at this particular area where Joseph is being sent out, he's given the dream, he proclaims the dream, and his father sends him out to go find his brothers. Remember that this is Joseph's process of his soul. And his whole focus was to what? Find your brothers! Find your brothers! Because we can see this now from an area of saying, okay, Joseph, go find your brothers, go get word what's happening, go bring it back to the father. But we have to get this from another, another angle as we look at the other end, where Joseph is now second in command, he's forgiven his brothers, he's had mercy on his brothers, his brothers have come to him, not initially knowing that he is Joseph, he is the brother that they tried to kill, that they sold as a slave, and Joseph goes out into another room in the palace, and he's wailing that even his servants can hear him because of so much turmoil, so much perplexity within his soul, and this process has to hit him at home, as what his father said to him here in Genesis 37, Go find your brothers. They're lost. They're hidden. They don't know the way. Joseph, you wake up and you come to your senses and you come into the dream so that you can find your brothers. Because as soon as he could find his brothers, hallelujah, he could bring in the lost sheep and he could bring them into their promise. Do you understand that it took Joseph going through his hard times, his trials, his tribulations in order for him to cause his brothers for them to know who they were? Amen. And it is no different for you. And that is why Jesus tells us to love our enemies because if they are truly in the flock and they are attacked by the enemy and they do not know God, they do not know the redeeming power of being set free from the attacks of the enemy, and they're bound up under another spirit, 
that spirit can have them look at us and be the same as Joseph's brothers were to him and cause them to hate us and see what is unlovely. God set me free many years ago when God told me, Robin, pre people see what they want to see. And he set me free and said, Robin, if people see negative in you, it is because it is already in their heart and you have to let go and not take it personal because they're seeing what they want to see. And this is where Joseph is because the teaching that God has for this today is to look at our whales. Is it well with you? Amen. That's going to be the subject matter for this teaching. Is it well with your soul? Amen. And so as we look at this, we're going to be looking at what well is in our soul. Is it a well of fresh waters where Holy Spirit will come forth out of our bellies like rivers of living water? Or is it a well as in James 3 verses 10 and 11? Is it a well of bitter waters? Because we're going to be focused on these two areas today. And God knew what wells were in Joseph. And God knows what wells are within us. And as I talk about wells, we're going to be talking about the reservoir in our soul. Where he opens that reservoir and whatever is in there, it comes running and gushing out. We're going to look at that as a well. And God is going to purify us today. He is going to call such an anointing of repentance. Woo! Hallelujah! That is going to be powerful. And it is going to come upon you by Holy Spirit. And it is going to break yokes of oppression. And it is going to cause you to be set free today. Hallelujah. Where you are going to know it is well with your soul. In Jesus name. And Joseph is in this process. He's having to find out which well he needs to pull from. And he's having to find out which well he needs to stop drinking from. Amen. Which well needs to be removed out of his soul. And so here he is in the wilderness. He's going about. He doesn't know where to go. And here he is greeted by a man. And the man asks him, What are you looking for? And where are you going? He's indicating what is your focus. And so this represents the reiteration of our call. That whatever the dream is, our focus is, Are we looking for the brethren? That is what Jesus told Peter in Luke 22 before he was sifted. After Jesus had already pronounced the kingdom that had been given to him by the Father, that he was going to display and give unto the disciples where they would rule on thrones as judges, immediately he tells Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has asked permission to sift all of you like grain, but I've already prayed for you, Woo! hallelujah, that when you will turn, you will strengthen the brethren. Do you understand? This is all that church is about. Is will you strengthen the brethren? Will you bring in the lost? Will you strengthen them with what you have been strengthened with? Is that not what Jesus told us? That the greatest commandments was to love the Lord thy God and to also love one another. John 17, the world's going to know us by our love for one another. So here is Joseph and he's going into the dream. And in order for the dream to be loud, the loudness of love has to exponentially increase in him. Now, he thinks he probably loves his brothers, but we don't know our own heart. We don't know our own heart, and we don't know how easily offended we might be, and how instead of speaking blessings on those that are hurting us, we might immediately start speaking curses on them. Let me tell you what, saints of God, there are so many false teachers, false prophets out there, they are speaking curses on their enemies, and that is from the pit of hell. Jesus tells us to bless our enemies. And so this reiteration of the focus of what the dream is about, is it's about your brothers. You're going to get through it. It's your dream by God given to you. But the whole purpose, the whole focus is for the brethren. It's for the church. It's that when you get through this sifting, when you come into position that you won't forget about the church and you will know you are part of the body, that you will not be after mammon, but you will be after the souls and you will reach for them and you will encourage them and you will strengthen them even though they might be in some of the people that discouraged you and came against you. It is a not what about 
people think about you. It is a what about what it is what's about you think about other people. It's about what you. Woo! I'm so excited. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm putting other words in front of other words. It is about what you think about other people. Amen. That is how excited I am about this teaching. It is so profound. It is so powerful. So let's look at this word wandering. This word wandering is ta'a. It's composed of three Hebrew letters, and it means tav, ayin, and hey. Tav, T-A-V, is the ancient symbol of a cross. It means sign, seal, mark, covenant. And then we have ayin, A-Y-I-N. It's the ancient symbol of an eye. It means to see, to know, to experience. And then we have hey, H-E-Y, and means to, uh, is a, a stick man worshiping. It means to behold, to reveal. So the word picture for wandering, are you ready? Is experiencing the covenant that is to be revealed. So what your wilderness is, is where you are trying to let God be God by you getting out of the way. And where you experience the covenant of God in you, hallelujah. And that covenant is revealed supernaturally. How is it revealed supernaturally? Because in your weakness, when you do not think you're going to make it, when you think you cannot go on, Holy Spirit comes in power and sets you free. And this is what the church has to get used to. That our God is a supernatural God. And a shame, and shamefully, they're getting used to only signs and wonders. And there are many deceiving signs and wonders that Jesus warns us in the book of Revelation. And even in Matthew, in the gospel, he warns us of lying signs and wonders that will come. And so the enemy is seducing us because remember this word actually, wandering also means to seduce. And so this could bring in 2 Timothy where we look at seducing spirits, perilous times and end days where people will not want to hear the true word of God, but they will have itching ears and they will hear what they want to hear. So as we look at today's teaching, what we're looking at specifically is the total outcome is how God brings you through your wilderness. And the place of the wilderness is to expose what well is in your soul. Amen. What well is in your soul? So if you're cursing people that have hurt you, if you're talking badly, and I'm not talking about just sharing in confidence or counseling. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you talk about them, you feel these emotions. And you don't have well feelings for them. You cannot stand them. That shows that there is a well of bitterness still operating within your soul. And so when we're looking at this wandering place, in our wandering, as we're sent by God, we are sent to find Him. And what happens when Joseph is going to find his brethren? He's met by a man. And this man is a prototype of Jesus Christ in our wilderness. That when we feel like we're not going to make it, when we feel like we're going to lose it, Jesus Christ meets us there because He has already overcome it. He's already overcome the wilderness. He's overcome the temptations. And He is feeding you strength to overcome all the power of this world in Jesus' name. And as you get through that wilderness and you're brought into a time of a reprieve where you're, where you're at Gilgal, and you're in a time of refreshing where your heart is circumcised, Hebrews 4, and you've entered into the rest of God. God brings you the oil of gladness. He brings you joy. He causes you to be renewed in the joy of your salvation. Then you'll go through another wilderness. God is strengthening you from glory to glory to go through wilderness, praising time, wilderness, praising time, wilderness, praising time, to praise Him in our wilderness. And that is what the Hebrew Valley as well as Shechem indicated. That valley indicated the wilderness. Amen. And so here is Joseph, and the man is meeting him in the wilderness, and this is Jesus with you and me. What is it that we're looking for in our wilderness? Oh, God, I need you to be delivered in my wilderness. Get your eyes off of you in your wilderness and get them on the brethren. And I'm saying this to my own self, and I'm not saying this in the process of where we're being healed. I'm not saying it about that. That we need to look at our healing. We need to examine our hearts. I'm not saying it in reference to that. I'm saying it that there are Christians out there that are so wounded and hurt, and I've been there, and I pray for them, 
they are so caught up in that hurt that they are not able to reach out and help others. And that is a distraction, a seduction of the devil where he wants to get you in that place where you're only focused on your problems and your problems alone and you're not reaching out to other people, helping them in their wilderness and he isolates you from the body like the Amalekites where they got off the stragglers and the enemy does that in order that we are not able to get out of our wilderness and we might as well be like Cain who was banished to wander all the days of his life. And that is what that attack of the enemy does. And God visits us in our wilderness. So we will get out of that wilderness season and go into a new season. And how does he do it? He gets our focus off of us and he gets it on the brethren. He gets it on the church. He gets it on other people. And so as we look at our distractions today, Think about this as well. When you look at the negative distractions, the negative part, because this is where God is going to bring in gratitude. The fastest way to get into your blessed season is to have a grateful heart, a thankful heart, a grateful heart. Amen. And so at that top level worksheet where you write down your true two stress events and you write down the first thought that comes to your mind, I also want you to go back to those thoughts. And I want you to write beside that one thing that you're grateful for, for every thought, every negative thought, write beside it one thing you're grateful for. God, I'm grateful that I have breath today. I'm grateful for the shoes on my feet. I'm grateful that you have given me food. I'm grateful that I was able to sleep in a bed. God, be with the people that are homeless that don't have a bed. And bring in that aspect of Job 29, where I love what it says about Job in Job 29, when he came into this revelation, after he came out of his wilderness, or in the midst of the wilderness, and he found wisdom, and that wisdom was from above, then it uncapped the well of fresh waters within Jacob, where he writes, I mean Job, with the fresh waters inside of Job, that Job 29 comes out of that, and Job 29 was like, God, you have been over my tent. Your light has been over my tent. I have been eyes to the blind. I have been legs to the lame. And people that had problems, you gave me the answer. I sought their uh, problem out, and you gave me the answer, and I ministered to their soul. And that is what we're looking at in this stress response because we're changing the mindset. It's about a transformed mind. And that transformed mind comes about first and foremost with the Word. And it comes about when we get a grateful heart. And that grateful heart produces a heart that reaches out. Amen. Amen, Mary Ann. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen, Jody. Amen, Deetra. Woo! Hallelujah. So this is for sure where Holy Spirit is leading us. And you're going to be super blessed at what God's bringing us to. Oh my goodness, because it's going to get deeper. So in this place of the wilderness, the man comes to him and he directs him in the way. So let's look at these scriptures as we get ready to end. Because this is what we're going to look at. He goes towards what? He tells him where his brothers are. His brothers are at a perplexed place. They're at a place of wrestling and they're wrestling their own demons. And here is Joseph walking up where these men hate him. They want to kill him. And in the midst of this wrestling, there's still something upon his brothers where his one brother proclaims that they will not kill him. We're not going to get into that today. But this is the place that I want you to look at today, that God wants you to look at. His brothers are wrestling. They are demonically oppressed. They are oppressed by a demon, and they do not know the way. Jo Joseph knows the way. He's been given the way by the man in his wilderness. And so let's look at verse 16 and verse 14. And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Tell me, I pray you, where they are pasturing their flocks. But the man said, they were here, but they have gone. I've heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and he found them at Dothan. Now, this is where we're going to end, and this is where we're going to get revelation. Because this word Dothan actually means two wells. Two wells. W-E-L-L-S. 
This word two wells is pronounced dothon. It's composed of three Hebrew letters. Now, this is going to be revelation. It's absolutely going to blow your mind. The first letter is dalet, D-A-L-E-T. The second letter is tav, T-A-V. And the last letter is noon, N-U-N. And so the three letters for dothan, dalet, tav, and noon, form an awesome word picture. Dalet, D-A-L-E-T, is the angel symbol of a door. It means to enter in pathway. Then we have tav, T-A-V, is the angel symbol of a cross. It means sign, seal, mark, covenant. And then noon, N-U-N, is the angel symbol of a fish swimming through water. And it means life and activity. And so the word picture for Dothan, are you ready? Is entering the door of covenant that has the activity of life. Now think about that, saints of God. Entering the door of covenant that has the activity of life. Because here he's being asked, What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers there at Dothan, the place of two wells. There's a well of bitterness, and there is a well of fresh water. In fact, they are at the well, and they are wanting to put him in it. They are wanting to put him in the pit. Do you understand this? God is bringing you a revelation that your pit is actually a well of fresh waters. If you stay in that well, and you let fresh waters of Holy Spirit come out of you, and fill that well up. Hallelujah. So we see this actually in James 3. One of my favorite teachers. If you are a minister of the Word of God. If you teach the Word of God. If you minister the Word of God. Make James 3 a core chapter that you read like clockwork. You read it monthly. You read it annually. And you make sure you get James 3 in your soul. Amen. So James 3, verses 10 and 11. This is where God's going to give us some understanding. Out of the same mouth come forth blessing and cursing. These things, my brethren, ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth simultaneously and in the same opening fresh water and bitter? Can a fig tree, brethren, bear olives or grapevine figs or grapevine figs? Neither can salt spring Neither can a salt spring furnace fresh water. So the whole emphasis, saints of God, is about the water. It's about what well is in your soul. What well are you drinking from? And it's exposed and it's produced. Woo! Is that not amazing? It's exposed and produced in your wilderness. And if you're speaking curses against other people, if you can't get past it, where there is just an emphasis that you want their demise or you want them to pay, that is first and foremost unforgiveness. If you need help on that, get my book at his feet off of Amazon. Read chapter 3. Amen. That is such an anointed chapter. You will feel the anointing as never before on that chapter of unforgiveness. But in this place, let's say you've forgiven them but there is residue of your past that's still creeping up where there's memories in that hippocampus and the enemy takes advantage of those memories. And let's say something happens and it triggers those memories and that door is open and you're in this place of, oh my goodness, what is going on? That is the time and place where God is exposing the well. And that is your place of opportunity and decision that you get to declare over this well, you're not one of bitter water. Only fresh water is in this well. And that is the place of opportunity where you get to prophesy and declare the blessings for your dream. Do you understand that Joseph's dream came out of his mess, out of his dysfunctional family, out of abnormal circumstances where the brethren wanted to kill him? Does that sound familiar, saints of God? In this place where you have been mistreated, where you have been abused, God is separating. He is, he is separating in this hour. He is separating those who have bitter waters. He is separating them from those that have fresh waters so they cannot contaminate fresh waters anymore. Scripture says, if you find a bitter root in the church, you are to uproot that bitter root lest it contaminate the many. Because that bitter root will contaminate the church. People like 
Sherry Stedman have been with our ministry for God's Firewall ever since 2010 at its inception. She can tell you if there is a better person in our ministry and they do not choose to get set free, I will go to that person and I will ask them not to come back to meetings anymore because I am not going to have them contaminate other people in our ministry. It spreads like gangrene and you have to watch those that have bitterness and bitter waters and you have to separate it from those people and you have to be around those that have fresh waters. Not that you cannot share. Now let me emphasize that. Not that you cannot share what you have been through to get healing on me. And I'm not talking about that because I have many people on here that share their histories of what they've been through or what they're going through to get healing. I want that. And that is why God had me put God's for All Healing of the Soul series out on Amazon for that purpose and to get healing inside of our person. I'm distinguishing that against the intention to want hurt for other people. And that is what God is bringing up in our soul where we don't even know what's in our soul, right? And so God brings us in this wilderness and we think that we're being mistreated, which we are, and we think that we're being spiritually abused, which we are. But in the midst of this, God is saying, guess what? That person is lost in some area of their soul. They're bound up. And by you rising up in the anointing, by the attacks that are coming against your person, you're going to overcome this in your soul. You're going to overcome this in your wilderness. And God is going to uproot any opportunity for the enemy in your person to wish evil for others. And you're going to, by God's grace, hallelujah, wish good upon others. And you're going to speak blessings over those that curse you. It is going to be like heaping up coals and putting it on their head, as it says in Psalms. It literally brings about repentance in Jesus' name. And so today, God is asking you, where is your brethren? Where are they? God is sending you in a difficult way, a hard way, into your dream. The dream is loud, but in order for it to get louder in your wilderness, He's going to ask you, where is your brethren? Where are they? Pray for them. They're bound up. They're lost. See them deliver. Woo! Hallelujah. So with that, we're going to pray after I do communion. And for those that have communion elements, I'm going to go ahead and get mine out. And right now, I just take this as the breaking of the bread. God, we thank you for what Jesus Christ did for us, God. God, we are so grateful, hallelujah, that you sent Jesus, the very Son of God, into earth as a baby, hallelujah, and that he grew up and he took our sins upon him and he nailed them to the cross, hallelujah, and he overcame them in us, hallelujah, and God, we take this bread as the remembrance of the breaking of the bread of his body that was given for us in Jesus' name. And God, we lift up the juice of the vine. And we thank you, God, that it represents the righteousness of Christ Jesus and that baptism that he fulfilled in Matthew 3 for all of mankind. Hallelujah. And that in that blood of his righteousness, hallelujah, we lift up this cup for the grape of the vine. And we thank you, God, that you have grafted us into the vine. And that we, God, are filled with the juice of his righteousness, hallelujah. And we are overcome with it in Jesus' name. So, God, we thank you, hallelujah, that you pour out Holy Spirit upon us and that you bring forth rivers of living water, that you open our hearts, hallelujah, to receive an anointing that's a fresh anointing, that you, God, bring in understanding into our person and you cause us to enter grace, grace in Jesus' name, grace. Grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the power of your nature. Hallelujah. That is revealed in us with rivers of living water. 
and we say, yeah, God, hallelujah, that you bring forth rivers of living water in our soul in the name of Jesus. And yea, God, hallelujah, that it is well with our soul in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that you are shining your face upon us and the countenance of your presence, hallelujah, gives us peace in the name of Jesus to see the mind of Christ, the very living God, your intentions and your heart in Jesus' name as you bring in understanding to our heart, as you reveal the nature of your promise and you abound grace upon grace over our soul and you flood forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You hold on, saints of God. You're dreaming loud and you're dreaming large. As God takes you through the wilderness and as he asks you in your wilderness, where is your brethren? And as God brings you through, hallelujah, he brings you into a new season where you dream yourself out of the old season. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. And we're going to be healed, amen.